You can sit there and be angry about something or you can use it to your benefit. I like to I like to use things to our benefit because at the end of the day, there's nothing that you that you're going to do to change it is here and it's not it's not going anywhere. So right. as I said in my first video, you know, as opposed to think about it, taking jobs or taking your job, think about using it to make money so that you can quit your job. Hey everyone, welcome to another Coffee with Kittle. Today I have Gary with me from T-Shirt Help Desk. I've got it pulled up right here. And if you haven't subscribe to Gary. You're going to want to go and do that. The link is down in the description because he's dropping mad knowledge on types of t-shirt tips and design things that I didn't even know. Just looking through it the last couple of days, just things you can do at home, things you can do in the marketplaces, all this kind of stuff. It's it's a wealth of knowledge and I'm so pleased to be talking with him today. I have him as a captive audience to just ask him conversation questions. And our topic we've chosen today is AI, specifically for t-shirt design. You all know that it's not going anywhere. We have Kittle AI, right? And it's only going to get better. We're about to unveil some crazy phenomenal upgrades to our AI, some tools in the AI that's going to help you with t-shirts and things like that. But right before we dive into that, maybe if you could, Gary, just maybe talk a little bit about your story for those that may not know you. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're just joining us, by the way, welcome to Kittle. So happy that you're joining us for this conversation. It's going to be a ton of knowledge, so make sure you stick around to the end. But yeah, Gary, why don't you go ahead and tell us just a little bit about yourself and what you kind of do on T-Shirt Help Desk, and then let's start this AI conversation. Awesome. First of all, thank you so much for having me, Drew. Absolutely. The Kittle family. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, my name is Gary Ejene. Uh I'm a New York City guy, you know, born and raised. And um, my thing with this, ever since I was about 18, 19, I've been like designing, uh, actually before that in high school, you know, designing uh, T-shirts. Then I went to school for it and I started working uh, in the industry uh, for a few companies. And then in 2008, the whole system crashed. Oh, man. As we all know. Uh, and I was out of a I was out of a job. And right. um, a friend of mine years before that had said, man, you need to teach all that, you know, all that design and T-shirt stuff. Mm. Like, man, n nobody wants to hear that. So just. On a whim, I made a couple of videos on YouTube mm -hmm. and I like forgot about it. And then one day I said, Oh, let me check it. And I had like literally like maybe a, like a hundred thousand views on, on a video. Wow. So like I think I might be, um, I think I might be onto something here. And oh, yeah. So, um, a, another reason why I started doing that was because when I first started way back in the 80s, um, people were really secretive and, and you couldn't really get mm. any information. Wow. And, um, uh, you know, unless you like worked or paid somebody. So I said, I wanted to be the person who I wish I had when I was a kid, you know, coming up and wanted to know how to do t-shirts or how to design or do all that stuff. Uh, I want to be the person who's going to give the information and, be, and, you know, be the person that I wish I had had when I was wow. a kid. Wow. Yeah. That's powerful, man. That's awesome. I mean, of course, we're, we're no stranger to YouTube. I love YouTube. Uh, I have several channels that I that I uh, am, I guess, a content creator on as well as help manage three or four others. So we're 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 no uh, strangers to YouTube and how powerful it is in yes. wanting to teach and educate. And it's such a, a fantastic thing that you're doing. Uh, and really helping people. And, you know, at the end of the day, guys, it's helping you make more money. So let's just be honest. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Come on. Indeed. Um, so that's amazing guys, please go check it out. It's linked down in the description. Um, Gary's been great and look forward to some of his, uh, you know, upcoming Kittle tutorials are great. Um, so let's talk about AI. Okay. So we're going to try to hammer out maybe three, maybe even more reasons as to why you should not be afraid of AI and why it's, you know, why it actually may be your best option especially if you're new to the t-shirt game. I mean, there's maybe no better time to start in the t-shirt game and let alone talking about the rest of the print on demand products. Cause maybe you make a banger t-shirt design 
and then you can adhere that to other products if you're in the print on, de print on demand game or even if you're just starting out a t-shirt business which probably many of you watching saw this title and said that's for me so let's let's just start with one reason you think that ai is so powerful why there's not really a reason to be afraid of it and like like why why should we be using that for t-shirts uh, okay <clears throat> Great question or questions. Yeah, um, questions, yeah. I set you up for too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the the number one. Well, first of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is you know, it's it's bad, and that it's going to take mm. you know, it's going to take people's jobs, all our jobs. But, yeah. You know, first of all, um, technology uh, in progression. There's all there's sacrifices, and. There's people, yeah, somebody's going to lose a job. But for every job lost, new jobs will be gained, mm, right? Okay. So people have to look at it the, the right way. Another thing mm. is that it's not, it's not going anywhere, you know? Like when, yeah. when uh, you know, there was a time, you know, our grandparents, they still have rotary phones, you know, and they, and they like their phones, but like who has a rotary, you know? who? who oh, yeah, know? right. And lines anymore so you can sit there and be angry about something or you can use it to your benefit i like to i like to use things to our benefit because at the end of the day there's nothing that you that you're going to do to change it is here and it's not it's not going anywhere so right. as i said in my first video you know as opposed to think about it taking jobs or taking your job think about using it to make money so that you can quit your job that's yeah, to work for you. Yeah, AI is going to be your employee, not the other way around. Exactly, exactly. That I have heard that before, especially at the beginning, you know, like <laughs> well, except for type, it really sucks at type right now. Yes. Uh yeah. it, so like it was really really funny because I I've, I've just seen so many memes. I need to put a, a compilation video together of all the memes people send me for the design stuff, but it was like um, you know, logo logo designers are saying like no, nah, I think we'll be fine because like a client still has to accurately describe what they want. So if they can't do that in the AI, they won't get anything worth looking at. Exactly. And and the type thing, I think that eventually Oh, eventually, yeah. They they're going to they're going to get it together. But also, you know, another thing is that uh or like because AI you can also use AI to make like art. But what's going to happen is that it's going to make, I think there's going to come up a term called organic art, right? Mm -hmm. Where you can film yourself doing it. And it's actually going to make a person painting something. I think that's going to have more value. You know, the AI art is going to be there, but actually organic art is going to have, if you can do it right, it's going to have more value. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so it's yes. It's an opportunity to for you as an artist to say, hey, this was not created with AI, and for other people who use AI to capitalize on it and to and to make money that way. So I think it's a win-win situation. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. I, two two thoughts that came to come to my mind are: I, I think that we're going to see an increase in quality because for those that are still, for those that are anti AI, all it's going to do is pressure you to make better stuff. Yes. So, and then for those that don't have the artistic ability, which I'm a strong proponent of, you can really learn anything in terms of yes. art. I don't think you have to be born with it. I mean, I, I certainly wasn't. There's this demand for, I like the word organic, you know, natural, maybe like handcrafted, you know, that's at the yes. end of the day, that's, that's what yes. it is. Uh, but I'm, you know, I'm writing a book right now and, and a friend was like, oh, you're going to, you know, I said something like I'm having trouble coming up with chapter titles or whatever. And he said, you know, of course, like, oh, just, you know, chat GPT. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to keep chat GPT out of this one. Right. Because there's already a storm of like crap Amazon KDP books that were made with yes. AI and they're just nonsense. So maybe this is a good segue into uh, a second point in how we can utilize AI effectively. I'm sure you've already started to discover and or get into this and probably going to do more videos on this on your channel in the future. Mm -hmm. But how how do you utilize it effectively? And this could be as specific as the type of design, right? Because we have things on shirts where where is it going to be? How many colors? All this stuff. I, th I think maybe you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, yeah, how do yeah. we use it effectively uh, to make money with T-shirts? You know. Well, number one is that 
if you are not, like you were saying, if you are not artistically, I guess, inclined, you can get something that looks really good. Right. The the first time or the second time, um, you're not going to always get what you want. So you have to learn sure. how, how to tweak it and how to how to work with it. Um, and also for me, I come from a graphic design background. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, there's something that you're not quite that good. You know, is that's sure. not your forte. And you can use that. Like if you're great with working with type, right? You can do all your type and then you can do everything. But the one thing you may not be good with something that looks like, it were, like it was painted. You can, you know, and you want that in the, in the, in your artwork, you can have AI add that one little part, right? And then you could do the rest, as we say, organically. So you can, um, I don't know, hedge your bet or, or, or uh, inc you can do something that could help with whatever your weakness is in, uh, with AI. It's essentially finding the part of the composition that you're, you're struggling with, right? That kind of is the beauty of the AI is some people find this annoying is the need to generate multiple versions or, or tweak it or do whatever. What if you had spent three or four hours drawing a graphic for a t-shirt that somebody hates? <laughs> now you have to draw it again yes. right or stop the project or take the etsy listing or the amazon listing or shopify ad off right <laughs> i mean there's a little bit of a different calling there with what we might call higher art not fine art like in museums but like if we're talking about hand illustrated stuff which is what i do a lot on the personal side you kind of have to be careful on not taking all the projects but in terms of like client work and or t-shirt designs like man you should not be complaining that you have to spend an extra credit to generate a different thing okay yeah, as, like come on yeah especially when it's literally just typing something again like <laughs> i mean yeah. like imagine if you did something uh, an entire work of art and you had to do it over like you say if, and you have to do it over from scratch it would take you a lot longer than rewording a sentence yes yeah, so you may get a completely different thing with with ai mm -hmm. but that's okay i mean your your bar of risk is like so much lower than trying to i mean you can have 17 t-shirt designs or you can have one really solid one which is fine you know if you want to do the if you want to go to hand drawn way Mm -hmm. That's also fine. But with AI, I feel like you can easily set up uh, one thing that we are major proponents of at, at Kittle, of course, is templates. But you could set up these templated compositions and then, like you said, just change the artwork like a whole bunch of times. You know exactly. what I mean? And you can use it. Uh, let's just say, you know, one of the great things I really love about Kittle is the fact that you have so many templates, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, you want to take it and you want to change it, right? So you sure, change yeah. it, you play around with it, and then you can go in, pull something out, and then go to AI and add that thing just by typing a prompt. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have something totally original. So I, I think it's, I think it's amazing, and I think that um, people need to get out of their feelings and just use it to their advantage. Maybe how have you been seeing it? Uh, use like what are the different niches or style of artworks that you say you can capitalize on really well with AI art because you know there are always going to be your shirts that are just text those are always going to sell well right they're easy to see they're easy to read it's all fine I would say you know from a person you know that comes from this background is that you know doing things in Illustrator we all know that uh, for the, those who don't know that it's uh, it's in many cases is really flat and mm, that happens when you're dealing with vector. The great thing about AI is that you can get those photographic digital prints without having to take a photograph, without having to you know do any hyper realism. And uh, you can you can do something that it doesn't necessarily have to look realistic like a photograph, but it can look like a digital painting. It can, hmm. you know, you can really get that depth and that dimension and the shading yeah. of something that um, really, at one point, you, you, you know, you can't really do that with Illustrator. And at one point, that's something that you had to really be a digital artist. And I think that that's where it just, it just leaps and bounds. And it's amazing in that you can get those, the, that digital printing that digital artwork look that's three-dimensional 
Uh, I think that that's where it really, really, I mean, the other stuff, of course, they have things that look like you can make it. Some people want to do vector stuff and there's nothing wrong with that. But sure. if you want to get that realistic digital painting look, you can do it with AI like that. And that's not an easy task to do on your own. Yeah, you can easily craft these prompts and even reference other artists names in the prompts right like yes like you can go to a, a website like art station which has phenomenal digital artists and the ai is so smart that when you type in someone's name that's like really famous in the digital art space you can say like in the style of or whatever mm -hmm. or like for the vintage folks like, like me i might say like in the style of michelangelo or whatever yes. and and it'll do it yeah and not and not to mention all of the the flat stuff that it will already do well like in the ai if there's anything it could do uh you know easily now it's it's a little bit easier I think with Kittle having our presets, uh, yes. deciding what kind of preset you would want to use versus something like mid journey. And I love mid journey. I have it. I pay for it. It's great. It's um, but you really have to, um, I mean, you have to know, like I, it takes me iterations. Like I probably don't use all my credits every month, but the first eight to 10 renders that it gives me and that I revise just aren't working. Right. So you just got to tweak around with it. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. At this, the same thing here. And I think that especially when you do something and it's almost perfect and you just want to remove a part of it. And it's so frustrating because it sometimes it just mm. won't, you know, it just won't do it. But I think this AI stuff is in its infancy. And I think that mm. okay. in two or three years, I mean, what this what this stuff is going to be able to do. Uh, in terms of not just creating art, but in terms of reworking the art that you already um, have created. I think it's going to be amazing. What are the things maybe if we if we talk about AI kind of as a main staple, let's just say for beginners, right? Because now <laughs> the bar of entry was already low, I think, okay. uh, in terms of print on demand, because we're not even talking about screen printing at this point or buying a heat press or whatever, which are all things you can do. Uh, yes. And may actually save you money in the long term if you know what you're doing. But print on demand is little risk. The bar of entry was already low, especially with something like Kittle. Mm -hmm. And now we've added AI, which makes the bar of entry even lower. So to the aspiring or starting t-shirt business owner, let's use AI as a core. That's going to be a core staple of your business, right? Okay. You're going to use that. You're going to use something like Kittle. What are the other two things, right? There's going to be, there's got to be a list I'm sure that you need to get up and rolling that are the most practical tips, the pieces, the resources that you need? I would say a couple of things would be number one is to find your voice or your niche. Mm, okay. To find yeah. that, that because, you know, so many people say I'm going to do t-shirts now I'm going to sell it to everybody. And it's like, that's a recipe for disaster and failure. Find a specific niche that you want uh, to get into. Right. And then you could, like we say, you can use the AI to do your designs. Exactly. And then um, once those designs are done, a couple of things is where you're going to sell your stuff, whether it be, I don't know, uh, Etsy, or is it going to be, you know, merch by Amazon? Are you going to open a, a Shopify, Shopify store? You know, yeah, you have to you have to figure that out. And then lastly, you have to figure out. Uh, I'm 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 a huge proponent of influencer marketing. Mm, uh, okay. That, whatever that niche is, find someone that has a you know relatively decent following, and whatever you have to do to get them to wear and promote your stuff. You do that. I would say that's even more important than running ads at this point. Ads can come eventually, but uh, influencer marketing in the beginning with a person in your niche, right? That's going to be, be best. And find someone that's, you know, not these million and two million follower people. Find TikTok someone, dancers or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Find someone that's, you know, smaller, but has us, you know, maybe 10 to 50, 100,000. Find one of them and see what you can do to get your stuff on them and take it from there. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of really great advice and not super difficult advice. I mean, there's just so much information now on the Internet. I think uh, one thing that we were talking talking about uh uh, Juna and I and a couple other collaborators uh, was that you have absolutely zero excuse, right? You have absolutely zero excuse. So 
if we're thinking about maybe the, the flip side of this, so now we've given some logistical practical tips on kind of what you need to get started, which isn't a ton. What are some of the, the barriers that you can destroy for us? Like what are some of the barriers that we can crash through that people are telling themselves or maybe stopping people from starting because we just we dispelled one the ai we've dispelled it if you need yeah. to dispel it again go back to the beginning of the video but <laughs> like there's got to be more i just had another interview an hour ago with christina who does a lot of etsy stuff and we dispelled some etsy myths that are keeping people from starting or or giving up and it's because they're they're not waiting until the four or five six seven week when they actually make a sale big it's a big blocker but what are some of the big blockers in your experience maybe you've seen like students you have or just from your experience um number one is a negative mindset uh, mm, okay thinking that oh it's too, oh it's not going to work it's too saturated I'll do it next year or something like that. I think Ooh, I'll that, do it next year as a big one. Yeah, um, get that out of your your um, get that out of your system, and just get out here and do it. That's number one. Um, number two, I would say do some research before you start. Do some research on uh, t-shirt businesses that are successful hmm. and see what their whole business and their website, see what it looks like. Because I see too many people, right? They have good ideas and they create a product uh, or a website or whatever they're doing that just doesn't look um, quote, close quote, professional. And okay. when people go online and they're going to give you their money and you know put their credit card information, sure. you want to feel like they're dealing with a, a reputable business and the biggest thing that I see is I see people that have websites that they've done themselves and it looks like they did it themselves. It's just <laughs> little tiny things like making sure that all of your images are this on your website are the same size or the same type of image, making sure that your logos and your colors match. Little things like that make such a difference in whether People will actually, you know, put their, you know, with all this fraud and scammers out here, little things like that make people leery of you. So I would say whatever the big guys are doing, it doesn't take much. Make your stuff look, not saying to copy their designs, but make sure, sure. make your stuff look like theirs. Yeah. I mean, that, that brings up one of my favorite all time quotes that I've stolen from Sean Cannell. I don't know if you know who that is, but um, I, it's basically that success leaves clues. That's essentially what you're saying. Yeah, 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 exactly. I, I, I love that. I've said that probably in the last six coffee with Kittle episodes because mm -hmm. it's just, it's true, right? Like why try to do this blind? <laughs> like don't do that. You know what I mean? It, like we've already established that you have all the tools at your disposal and then to learn how to use them. Now we have YouTube. All right. Or we have courses you can buy or you have Kittle you can use. And then to actually succeed, you have endless models of success. Like you're saying, go and investigate. And I think what people do, I think a big blocker maybe or a barrier is that people will go and do that and then fall right back into like, oh, they've already, they're doing it so well already. You know, like there's no reason for me to do it. You know what I mean? And it's like, we have to flip that on its head and say, this is what success is looks like and there's probably 50 other people looking at doing this like i am and only 10 of us are going to make it through if that right yeah. so we have to be in the the smaller percentile that says this is what success looks like i'm going to go for it by continuing to look for success right look for the clues that success leaves yeah exactly and also um if you go in your closet right from i don't know from a couple of years look at all the t-shirts that you have and they're not all by one company like there's enough room sure. for everybody you know mm -hmm. there is okay. enough room if, if you have a, a cool t-shirt somebody's going to want to buy it Point blank period, no matter if they have a, a, a stack full of them, someone is going to want to buy it if it looks good and, it, and it's about something that they want. They're going to want to they're going to want to buy it. And that's it. And you got yourself a, a, a sale. So I think that that's a really big myth is that it's hmm. saturated. Yeah. Saturation is actually a good thing because what it, what saturation says is that there's a market for it and that there's a big market, you know, for it, you know, and if they can make it, if someone else can make it, why not you? 
Yeah. And that was actually, that's funny. You mentioned that. That was actually going to be my next question was about oversaturization, if that's even a word, uh, mm-hmm. due to like, because then the fear could be like, well, dang, it was already tough before. Now there's AI. So now it must be double saturated. But you've already dispelled that. You already answered the question because you were like, yeah. t shirts are almost like paper towels. I would yes. I would maybe not make that analogy so hard. It falls apart at some point. But you think about like all of the trips you go on and you're going to buy a hat or a shirt or something usually. I mean, maybe not. Like how many times can you go to Disney World and not buy something? It's impossible, I'm sure. Or just put input any amusement park or uh, national park. Ah, dude, I'm a sucker for national park shirts, dude. They're so cool, right? Um, by the way, that's a design style. Just go find the design style and make it in something that's your niche or whatever. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, just urban outfit is recently too. They had a whole bunch of national park shirts, but, but go ahead. Oh, they did. Oh yeah. Yeah. I urban outfitters is a great, and that's also another, I wonder if, if you have any tips for this on, it's a good point. Where do you look for either inspiration or, uh, trends? I love walking around urban outfitters. I don't ever buy anything because it's a million dollars, yeah. but uh, <laughs> like, dude, even Walmart has some heat now, man. Like when I walk through yeah. Walmart there, dude, I have some of their anime tees. Oh man, the classic anime, dude, they're great. So like, where are the places that you kind of suggest like, man, just go out and look at this or how do we do this side of the research? One of the first things that I do is I go to, well, the first thing I do is just, I do a Google search of cool t-shirts and put the year in cool t-shirts. 2020. Okay. Nice. I didn't even think about that. That's the first thing I do. The second thing I do is I go to a place like, although it's it's centered a little bit more geared towards women, but I go to Pinterest and I do the same exact thing. It's great. Um, Then I go to my favorite brands, whatever my favorite brands are. I go to their website and I see what is the latest you know, and yeah. um, then I go to I'm in New York. So I just I just head downtown or head to the local um, stores where like th- that are trendy. And I actually on my on my channel, you, if you put in T-shirt help, that's trends. I actually have trend videos. Oh, um, great. Yeah. So I just go in and to the stores and I see and I just take a look and I see what's going on. I even go to the big box stores too, like Macy's and mm, okay. Nordstrom and Target. Target has a lot of great t-shirts. They have a whole uh, t-shirt yeah. section. So that's pretty much um, that's pretty much what I what I do. Yeah, and you're gonna want to look for obviously look at take a scan of everything that's there. But if there's one. <laughs> There's one rack or one stack that's got one or two t-shirts left, right? You've you've found a winner, you know, like one of the one of the big ones that I've seen recently, like I said, walking around Walmart and Target, the 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 kind of just general floral niche. Like anything floral is just going to work, right? And then you pump something like that at, at some kind of prompt in AI, dude, you're set for days, right? Exactly. And also, um cuz you were saying before about uh saturation Mm-hmm. I think that the the times when there when you can take saturation serious is when you see the same design over and over again with like the same words on it just changed around. Exactly. But if you take that and then you change it, like let's just say it's some it's words, but floral is in, right? So then you add yeah. flowers to it. Now you've changed it. You, you understand what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Um, or yeah, just, you know, kind of hybriding certain trends with each other that, um, you know, that can really work, but the same thing over and over again, I can see the saturation is that in that, but all you have to do is just change it in some way, shape or form. And all of a sudden it's a brand new, it's a brand new t-shirt. Yeah. It's brand new shirts, brand new niche, sub niche, whatever that becomes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you're going to want to like another, another saying I like that is, I think especially important for t-shirt design, I think it's really important for YouTube in general, is to to find your tribe. You know what I mean? Yes. And like, I think there's this almost like internal morality issue that d- we designers or creators play with or, or struggle with, which is like wanting to design for ourselves. And I think that we want to, I kind of like to do it somewhere in between. I, I think I want to make something that I'm proud of, but I'm not necessarily going to wear it if the niche that I'm targeting or the sub niche that I'm targeting it 
is who's going to buy it, right? And so I think that that might be another barrier. Is there any other advice kind of when you hear that Mm -hmm. where it's like, this is kind of not the reason you're doing it. However, it should still look cool to, to yeah. you. You know, I think I think it's kind of a struggle. I, all right, so that's that's a great one because there is a there is a site called Threadless and Designed yeah. by yeah. Humans, right? Where you see all of these fantastic designs, but you know what's crazy is that a lot of times those designs they're only purchased by people who are into designs and quirky and like stuff like that. So Threadless have in in Designed by Humans they have their own community kind of yeah that that like that stuff but in general those those shirts although they make look great they don't don't sell sell. they don't really sell that well unless you're selling to people who like that stuff so and sometimes as you know being you know a creative we can fall into that trap of designing stuff that we would like and we that looks good but no we look it looks good yeah yeah and but a lot of people you know a t-shirt is a very much a an impulse buy and mm. it's all about passion so you have to give the people there's an old song you have to give the people what they want you have yeah. to give the people what they want and what you can do and this is something i learned in design a long time ago what you can do is once you learn what the people want you then find that and then you put your creative spin on it. So that way you can satisfy your inner creative demons, right? Mm. But you can give the people what they want at the same time. Because at the end of the day, it's all about making money. <laughs> and we're looking t-shirts, right? That stuff will sell on Threadless. It will, it's not gonna um it's not gonna sell in in the real world. People will look at it, oh, that's nice, and they'll just keep walking. Or they'll yeah. go to the website, that's nice, and then they'll just click, you know. But if yeah. you put something in there that means something to them and it's a great design, that's when you get the sale. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think this brings up a really great distinction between like a t-shirt brand or just a brand and then selling t-shirts, right? Yeah. So like they're like Supreme can sell Supreme on a shirt. Just it's just Futura sideways yeah. <laughs> or whatever. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's because they've built this following this, this, this exclusivity as a, a name, a brand where they could just like, I think of another place I really like to go is H and M. I don't know. I mean, I've been yeah. to the H and M in New York and it was like, I yeah. just lost my brains. And but, Uniglo is a good one too. Oh yeah, yeah. And I love walking around in H and M and like um, I can't remember what what brand it is, but it's like they were able to get specific licenses to use like the NASA patch logo on it, and it was like it didn't even matter that like all that that's all it says. They have built the following around the the name that's on the tag, right? That people are gonna buy it, which is different than kind of what we've been talking about which is to make sales in t-shirts like the graphic t-shirt right it's a little bit different so do you have any kind of thoughts that come to mind about that and the differences and like where you might be like you might be trying to be this cool influential t-shirt brand that sells your logo on it which nobody cares about right now (laughs) versus right like actually making a solid impulse buy t-shirt that should still look good i actually did a video i can't think of the name of it. i did a video where i talked about that and in a nutshell nobody cares about your brand name you know when when no one knows who you are i think that one of the hardest things to do is to build a brand Mm. uh, from scratch especially now (laughs) yeah yeah so what you can do is like if you're if you have a niche and you're trying to appeal to a core target audience you could put stuff on that shirt that appeals to them, right? It could be words, it could be a design or something in the design that appeals. And then put your logo kind of big on it. Mm. And as you begin to build that and you use influencers and you begin to build that brand awareness and people get to know your brand, then you can begin with your brand. Um, but you know, when people see like stuff like Supreme and Gucci or, or whatever, this, these big brands, those companies have brand ambassadors. They have multi-million dollar um, ad campaigns, right? To build up that brand awareness where they can just have the logo. That's you, it, yeah. 
you know, you don't have that. And when you put your logo, it's important to you because you made it up. But the average person who doesn't know you, they're like, who the heck this? is that? <laughs> yeah, they, 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 and that's that. I mean, I've, I've made I've said that in a couple of videos and there's a bit of pill to swallow. People don't like it. I mean, and there's always exceptions to every rule. But keep that in mind. If no yeah. one knows who you are, they're not buying the brand. But go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I, I, I mean, you mentioned those, you know, those big clothing brands and if you have one of these two resources then do whatever you want you can either have endless time or endless money and most people yeah. don't yes those brands have endless time and endless money mm -hmm. if they themselves don't have the endless time then they hire the person that does to make whatever shirt design that's going to sell with the logo really big or whatever yeah. but most people don't have endless time and endless money to spend on a budget to raise your own brand awareness now i could see there being somebody that makes a pretty banger logo brand based around saving turtles. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're able to do a, a, a nice enough ad spin to raise awareness and people just buy the shirt because it's attributing to a good cause. Mm -hmm. Now that's a little bit different, right? That brand functions not for the purpose of t-shirt anymore. If you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's a little bit different than like, I'm going to have this streetwear brand that I call glowing lights or whatever the heck. And everybody's going to wear it because it says glowing lights and neon colors. That's not a thing. It's, it's, it's not. Now, of course, there's exceptions to every rule. However, in general, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. There's a lot that you have to do to get that thing going. And that's why Nike pays these mm. people millions of dollars just to be in ads and to wear their stuff because they know the power of that. But it costs, it costs them. You know, you can slowly but surely build it up, sure. you know, but it's it's going to take it's, it's going to take time. It's going to yeah. it's going to definitely take time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Gary, this has been awesome, man. I think this is going to this is going to help so many people. Just the this the few tips that we've even breached in this conversation. Is there any other uh, kind of last minute encouragement or advice you want to give and uh, if you have anything you want to uh, talk about upcoming on your channel or courses that you offer, anything like that, feel free to talk about that as well. Only thing I'm going to say is number one, start and start now. Um, right now. Yeah. AI is not going anywhere. So use it, right? Go in there. They, they give you Kittle is amazing. They mm. give you your credits go in there and just start playing with it and i gotta tell you it can be addictive <laughs> <laughs> that's good <laughs> yeah. to use those prompts and to all of a sudden just a couple of minutes see what you were thinking in your mind um use start now and use ai and it's not going anywhere and in, and like i said before in terms of uh taking jobs people industry changing you know there's people who used to work at typewriter factories you know what i'm saying like there's people who used to be elevator operators that's gone you know what i'm saying and they and they 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 were okay so um use ai to your benefit right use mm -hmm. it to quit your job as opposed to thinking about losing it and that's yeah. all i can say absolutely anything coming up for you on your channel or or any any anything you offer that you want people to know about or where to find you maybe Okay, so you can find me, of course, my biggest platform is YouTube. Just put in T-shirt help desk. I'm also on uh, Instagram and I do a little uh, TikTok. I'm not on Facebook uh, anymore. I would say that I have some really great stuff coming up and we're doing oh, lots of cool content. There's a bunch of people doing uh, T-shirt stuff now. So we like to take it to the next level, do some cool stuff. So I would say go over there and subscribe and you never know what you're going to see. <laughs> you never know what's coming next, right? Yeah, you never know. Excellent. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, definitely subscribe to Kittle. It's a red button right there. It'll just take you one second. And if you're interested in getting involved with the Kittle community, I have a Discord link down there for you as well. I even have a whole uh, POD and T-shirts channel set up for you with tips like this, uh, which I'll be sharing this video in. So if you want to join the Kittle community, go ahead and join that. Uh, and of course, check out Gary on YouTube for all of his amazing tips. Uh, thank you all again for watching. We hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. See ya. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs>